Hi. As a follow-on, I'm going to try and give some advice in terms of the uh, the equipment that we use, my recommendations with software, and the advantages of um, moving over to CAD and uh, CNC production. So hopefully this will give you a little bit of an insight and uh, maybe the MFA can make this file available on their website so you can download these, these pointers. Um, so yes, further thoughts and considerations in terms of implementation of uh, CAD and CNC in your business. So for me, the main um, advantage is better design. Um, the, the, the simple ability to look at the project from different angles on a computer screen, spin it around um, and have customer involvement as well. Um, you will straight away see if the frame doesn't look right, profiles don't look right. Um, it's very easy to reference uh, curvatures from um, coach roofs, um, other bits and pieces on the boat in terms of getting the overall design looking correct. And as mentioned, the customer will be involved. So you'll tend to get a, a higher degree of customer satisfaction because um, they they will have signed off the design. In the past, it's often been the case that we may have um, completed the brief that the customer has given us. We may have advise the customer where bits and pieces were perhaps not going to look correct and where we may have done something slightly different. A lot of customers will take our advice. There will, will be a percentage that perhaps are adamant they want it done their way. And what we tend to find with the CAD is that a few of those customers will um, will, 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 will change and see what we were trying to describe and um, uh, make amendments. So our work tends to look better out on the marina. The customers are um, uh, happier with the um, with the design, and we're much happier as well because we can tweak the design before we've bent a framework. So there's no cost in materials um, in terms of changing the angles, um, starting again. It's just a time element that uh, we would be um, incurring cost on, and we, we tend to spend a, a decent amount of time with the customer getting a decent brief and explaining how things can work and on that basis we will attempt to draw what looks right and we'll give the customer what they want so that we don't end up redrawing two and three times but sometimes that 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 will happen um just to show a little bit more on here we also um do sort of have a look at how the framework is going to fold um You've just seen me there turn on the, um, the, the framework. Uh, what we're looking at here, um, the, the frame is going to be mounted on a slide track on the side. So um, let me just try and turn a little bit off here and try and show you um, a little bit better what's happening. Uh, two seconds, just need to change this layer here. Um, so the, the frame is going to be mounted on a slide track across here um, and uh, this framework extends after the, um, the, uh, the backstay. So as you can see here, um, this is where it stands in the forward position which would foul a winch handle. Um, the, we quite often do this. Um, the outer circle shows um, 100 millimeters clearance on a standard winch handle. So from the um, normal uh, mounting position the framework um, would actually foul the winch handles here so what would happen is the frame would mount uh, slide back on the slide track and thereby clear the winch handle and we can show the customer how the frames fold we, we look at all of this as part of the design um, including with a spray hood as well um, with, with a spray hood um, that there are layers here that are turned off but this is a framework of the spray hood underneath and we would also have a look at how that all folds I'm just going to turn that back off a second um, so you can change the active layer um, so you can see there's a lot here that we can uh, um, sort of switch on and off um, so I can turn the window material back on I can turn um, for clarification we, we put some marks on there with the seams um, and again that's the winch I can turn that off there. So you can see there's quite a bit of um, uh, scope with design in terms of um, checking how the framework folds. Um, normally with an enclosure we would finish it forward of the backstays here but um, because this backstay leans forward so much um, the backstay projects through the roof on here. Let me just blow that out. Um, but yes that gives you a, a little bit of an insight. 
here are some pictures of the completed project. Um, you'll see as well in the, these photos, staff will actually go down with the measurements of where the, um, the frame is to mount. Um, we would have um, made sure that the framework with the canvas on leaves enough headroom at the helm um, so all of this would be sorted out um, beforehand and that I'd prefer this every time to actually having to go down to the boat with a client and um, sort of cutting bits off bars and adjusting bits and pieces. Um, with a CAD we can see what's possible, we can you know, use a slide track, uh, look at different um, folding options, see that um, what headroom will be available, how it affects the winches, and all that can be cleared and um, uh, signed off with the customer before the design goes through. And if there are any compromises to be made, um, we, we can be pretty sure that we've explored every sort of possibility before we come to the customer with what we would recommend as the best option in terms of folding. But again, they'll still have an input in, in terms of the um, uh, how, how that finally works. The majority of the time is perhaps spent taking the CAD data that's required. Um, certain occasions this may be available from the boat manufacturer. And drawing up the um, initial services that we're going to design the, um, the canvas package from. So I'm talking more about where we design it from scratch rather than doing a recover. Um, and then it's not so difficult to change the design. So quite often now um, with volume boats, uh, let's take some of the Bavarias for example, some of the Genos, Benetouts, we may have three or four different designs on the spray hood. Um, but they will all be photographed in detail and every project is e easy to, to replicate. But once we've got an initial design, it's not much more difficult to then generate a, a, another design. We don't have to visit the boat again. Um, if we've got a customer that's a little bit taller, wants a bit of increased height, increased height in the spray hood, or for the spray hood to come further back, um, we can do that. And I don't have to go out and visit the boat. I can do that all in-house, send the designs out to the customer, get them approved, and that then resides as, as a CNC file. So it becomes very, very easy to, 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 to repeat. Same with the frameworks, um, we have a CNC file for every framework that we generate. The shots on screen now are exactly the same boat, um, but this project is designed 130 millimeters lower in, in terms of the, um, the cockpit enclosure. So that's around about five inches lower. So just gives you an idea, it probably doesn't look much different, but um, we, we don't have to revisit the boat to redesign the canvas to a lower height. I'm going to um, start discussing the software that we use and the, um, the device that we use to acquire the CAD data. Um, these are my recommendations. Um, we've looked at many different software platforms um, before we went over to what we use and the same with um, uh, different platforms for acquiring the CAD data. Um, I've looked at and trialled many many different platforms and um, I'm pretty convinced that uh, in using the ProLiner um, we're using the best device out there at the moment for our for our industry. Um, it's not perfect and there is some awkwardness in acquiring um, some of the data that we will um, need to achieve um, but as it stands at the moment um, I do not believe there's a better option out there. We have looked and we've trialled many different systems and I'll give some sort of insight in terms of why we have um, and we still use the ProLiner. Before we start I'm just going to show you how we used to produce our work prior to 3D CAD. We used to measure all of our sprayers and cockpit enclosures um, and, and similar products and we used a system of triangulation which is how I learnt the trade. Um, so basically the whole scene would be split up into triangles and this could then be marked out manually and the traditional way is that the um, the floor of the sail loft or um, a cover maker would be used as a large drawing board and using these measurements you would mark out the, um, the patterns and uh, you'd obtain the sort of profiles that you're seeing on the screen now by marking out from those measurements. Um, so you're seeing a spray and cockpit enclosure there, um, basically half of it because the, pro the project is the same both sides. Um, but when we initially purchased the um, CAD cutting table, we took a, a CAD package called AlphaCam, which I, I wouldn't recommend. We no longer use that and uh, we prefer um, Rhino, but it's AlphaCam you're seeing on the, 
um, screen now. But we very quickly learned that um, uh, rather than um, marking the projects out on the floor, then making a manual pattern of that uh, um, project, and then we used a digitizing board to import that into the CAD, it was quicker, easier, and more accurate to mark the project out within the 2D CAD package. And this had a great benefit to us because we became very fluent in um, 2D CAD skills. So this was much, much quicker than um, marking the project out manually and then bringing it into the CAD via a digitizing board. Um, so various advantages of measuring. Um, we, we had staff join the company that were used to templating from a previous company and learnt the measuring method and they preferred it because um, you, you could measure in situations where it would be awkward to template. If all the boat services were wet um, that would be a problem. If it was windy that could be a problem and it's quicker. It's quicker or they tell me it was quicker to measure than template. Um, so it looks difficult. It's harder to learn. Um, but once once mastered, um, uh, I would say it's a, a, a quicker project. Um, you're seeing pictures on screen now. Um, these are all projects that were produced from uh, taking measurements and then subsequently marking out the projects as I've just um, uh, just discussed. So it just gives you an idea of where we were at before using 3D CAD. So in terms of software, we use Rhino, um, Rhino, which is a 3D CAD package. Um, I had looked at various other software packages. Um, SolidWorks comes to mind. Um, but we, we are confident that for our line of work, Rhino is the best suited CAD package out there. Um, various reasons, um, but not least, it's cost effective. Um, the, the cost is a fraction of some other packages and that's without any sort of loss of functionality that we, we, we require. Um, but that wasn't the reason that we actually picked it. Um, Rhino actually um, had more capability compared to some of the other packages um, when, we, when we trialled them. Um, other reasons that I would recommend Rhino, um, it's easy to learn. I find it much easier to learn than other packages. You can, um, the, the help is very easy to access, whatever command you're, um, you're activating, you just press F1, um, help will be at hand. Um, you can turn help on, so it's always available on the side of the screen. Um, and most commands, there's a very short video that will play um, within the help menu, and that will just show you the sequence of commands um, to, to, to um, to, to make that uh, required tool work. So, you know, which co um, sections to select first and the um, perhaps uh, the options that are available in that tool. So, Rhino, cost effective, very easy to learn. There's a whole wealth of videos out on the um, web which will um, make, make initially learning the package so much easier than um, trying to uh, fathom your way through the package on your own. So I would definitely go away and watch one of those two of those videos. Um, probably go to the Rhino um, website and initially watch the more basic tutorials that they supply so that there are tutorials. Start with the basics. Don't try to run before you, um, uh, before you can walk. And initially Concentrate on 2D. Forget the three-dimensional side, um, unless you've got you know a real knack for the CAD, the CAD side of things. But initially, look at um, drawing shapes. Um, it may, none of it may seem relevant to what you're looking to learn, but you need to learn how the um, coordinate system works, how you would mirror an object, offset, copy. Um, so it doesn't matter what the training video is um, showing you, what their project is you're learning some of those more basic commands. So, as I mentioned earlier, you can um, download Rhino and uh, use it free of charge, or at least you can in the UK with so many saves. Um, there's, a, there's a limit on the saves that you can perform. You can download it again afterwards and um, check that the package is for you. Um, and 
dodgers, cell coats, start off with the more basic things, frame design. And if you can get a hold of a, a, a CAD file for a boat um, out on the web or maybe from a boat manufacturer that you've got a working relationship with, um, that's not a bad idea because that will give you something that's more relevant in, in terms of trying to produce a spray coat, a tonneau cover or, or something else um, like that. Um, there, 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 is, there, there will be certain things that you will need to learn. Um, it's no good making a cover that's going to cap on without any tolerance. So if you've got an exact fit, um, the canvas work needs to be slightly larger if it's a tonneau cover or something that's capping over um, uh, an object. Um, you, you need a tolerance on, on, on there. One other point that needs to be remembered is that um, it's possible in Rhino or most packages to create surfaces which bend in uh, or flex in both directions. And these surfaces wouldn't be capable, capable of being flattened um, to a 2D profile without having um, uh, darts or gussets in, in, in that, that panel. So um, if we imagine a football, um, you, the only way that you um, form the shape of a football is by um, cutting segments. Um, and the segments sewn together form that 3D um, sphere, that, sh that shape. And the smaller the segments, um, obviously, the more accurate that uh, that that um, spear is going to be to a, you know uh, to to its true shape. The larger the the panels um, that it's divided up into, um, the more of a sort of segmented shape it's going to be. If that makes sense. So you need to be careful that you generate services um, which are. Rhino uses the term um, developable, which means that they um, it's a ruled service. And um, if you imagine unrolling your material across um, the two bows of a spray hood or cockpit enclosure or bimini framework, um, that the material is taking a straight line between um, between the bars, and the curvature is around the framework. Um, Obviously, in reality, when we fit these covers, we quite often find the canvas will flex a little bit the other way as well because of the um, sideways tension. Um, but what I'm saying is you need to build services which can be flattened correctly and um, enable darts and gussets to go in where they would be required to, to form that proper shape. Um, you, you start to learn that um, sometimes um, we... we, we we make judgment calls. Um, take a spray hood, or as you call it, a dodger, um, where it radiuses round the um, the corner of the combing. Perhaps um, you could pull in what we would call a banana dart. Um, uh, I think most people will be familiar with this from upholstery, where the um, cat, uh, where, where the um, the back cushions go around a uh, round, round a radius. Um, but in reality we don't put that banana dart in because it would be going through the window panel and would look unsightly. But I think you know what I mean, at the corners from the um, uh, corner of the combing on the deck up to the, um, up to the bar, you can probably pinch a small banana dart at, at, along that, uh, that corner profile. So in reality, sometimes with those profiles, um, if there's a mismatch between the frame curvature and the, um, the combing on the boat, what, what you can, um, ideally it would need a banana dart, but we don't put it in because the dart will look unsightly and you can get a, a very small amount of rippling. But in reality, um, the window material tightens up and uh, um, that, that, that disappears. Moving on from initially trying out the CAD package and seeing if it's for you and if it's something that you could possibly get interested in and learn. Um, what I would say is that it's abs there's absolutely no point in going down the CAD route unless you have um, uh, the capability of cutting out um, CNC files. So it's, th there's no use in having a, uh, a CAD file, a cutting plan of a canvas package, unless you can actually cut that package out. Um, there's absolutely no relevance. You, you cannot... Um, take that uh, CAD data and produce a, a manual template without <coughs> having access to a, a, a CNC cutting table 
or not as far as I'm aware anyway. You, you could possibly use a large scale plotter to print out templates um, from that. But if you're not looking straight off to make that um, financial commitment, um, as I mentioned before, here in the UK, one or two fabric wholesalers and hardware wholesalers into our industry actually um, have taken um, or have installed a CNC cutting system and that may be something that's available to you or maybe a, a competitor that you get on with or there may be an associated industry maybe a company um, manufacturing airbags for example for cars um, <coughs> the tent industry there may be other industries even clothing that have a CNC cutting table and Equally, here in the UK, I know there are one or two companies that um, have set up just in as much as um, producing a, a CAD cutting service. So at some point, you'll either need access to the um, uh, CMC cutting technology via making the capital investment yourselves or taking on board a partnership with, with another company. Um, but, <clears throat> you know, finance is available. Um, Unlike an employee, that CNC table, if you maintain it, is there with you for the long term. And the payback on, on this could easily be over a 10 year period. And <coughs> you will make the saving. Um, if you've got the repeat work, you <coughs> are definitely going to make the saving in terms of labor, in terms of cutting, cutting out the product. So for me, the next step, and probably before purchasing any um, uh, anything like a pro liner um, because you need to have certain skills first you need to have the CNC or the CAD design skills um, before you're going to be able to do a lot with um, any sort of uh, CAD data you, you, you acquire um, so I, I would consider once you've learned the basics and as far as you can with the um, initial tutorials and then there's a wealth there's a wealth of more advanced tutorials if you search with Rhino and perhaps even related to our industry. But I, I'd consider then um, having proper paid for tuition. Um, in the UK, there's, I, I know um, there's a, a few companies that offer this. It can either be classroom based where you would attend a, a, a course and that might be quite generalistic and that would be covering um, features of Rhino that you would never use. Um, and perhaps a little bit of coverage of what you wanted. But what I would recommend is that once you've learned the basics, you make up yourself a list of all the things that you're struggling with, all the things that you would like better explained, and you pay for somebody to come into your workplace and perhaps have two or three days training, present to them the problems that you're having, show them where you've got to, um, and then maybe you know take all that on board learn what they've shown you and maybe another 12 month period have a second batch of training um, what would be great is if there were a training provider that um, uh, or facilitator that was um, <coughs> had a, a, a background in our industry so because Rhino is a very powerful package there are an awful lot of tools within Rhino that will have no um, relevance to our trade. And so there's, no, there's a lot there that you don't need to learn. But equally, um, there, there, are, uh, there are parts to the process that um, you may find quite complicated where there's a simple tool. You would never have found your way to, to finding that tool within Rhino, um, but there's a much more simpler way to um, accomplish a task. So. It would be great if um, two or three companies got together um, and besides you learning from the training provider, the training provider becoming um, more clued up on what our industry wants. So perhaps um, initially they may have to fathom out the, the best protocol in terms of um, uh, you know, making a framework, um, designing a framework for a for, for a spray or cockpit enclosure. But as they visited one, two, three or four shops, they're going to become much more conversant in terms of just showing you this is the way that this can be done. So I 
would definitely recommend paying for training, but only after you've got through the initial stages. There's no point in terms of paying for somebody to teach you the, the, the very basics. Um, the one exception to that is if you have um, perhaps a college that provides uh, an evening course, um, maybe you, you could attend that, but I know in the UK that wasn't available to me. So um, I am self-taught and then once I'd learnt, um, we, we were actually producing spray hoods, but at that point we actually took on board training in terms of further developing um, our, our, our skill set. Um, one thing I do need to make everybody aware of is that there's an awful lot to learn here and you need to be in, it, 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 in this for the, for the long haul. Um, nobody is going to, well I, I wouldn't imagine anybody here is going to be producing spray hoods within 3D CAD within a couple of weeks. Um, there's going to be a, a little bit of trial and error. There's so much that we've learned along the way, tips, techniques and processes that I cannot put through just in, in, in this video. There's not enough time and it would need a classroom environment to do that. And, and to give you an idea, if, um, if I had somebody working with me alongside me, I'd probably expect a, a, it's going to take around about two years um, working alongside to clue them up properly in terms of um, uh, designing correctly with the, um, the, the, the CAD. And they would need a firm background in terms of um, the manual ways of um, producing the canvas work anyway. Um, whoever's going to do the 3D CAD design, if you took somebody straight out of university, um, they need to know how a boat works, how a main sheet swings, how winch handles work, cleats release, how um, all, you know access going forward, all the things that um, become second nature for us. They would need to be aware of all that. So you, you need skills in terms of doing it manually and then you take that in, in, into the CAD and you start to use some of the CAD tools um, <coughs> to, to, to speed up the process. We, we started with 2D CAD. Um, we, we took on a CNC cutting table and no 3D CAD, it was just um, a means to an end in terms of we had repeat orders, um, production work, CNC table was and the um, CNC frame bending uh, investment was to facilitate um, easy reproduction. So I guess what I'm also saying here is that um, say a spray hood uh, took you, um, I'm going to guess here, but maybe eight hours to template uh, to, to, to cut out you know with all your reinforcing and you know your design time with the customer initially um, don't be surprised if initially it's taken you a week to do a spray hood now how do you fit this in and uh, you know um, keep the business running um, for me it was a commitment to be doing this in my own time my spare time evenings and weekends and gradually you know five days becomes four becomes three becomes two and before I know it, um, I'm producing the work in the 3D CAD package, um, perhaps quicker than what we were doing it manually. Um, but that took time, and that was over a, um, probably over a two, two to three year period to get to the speed that I'm at now. And you know, even now, um, time scales are, are, are improving, but it, it does take time. Um, one big advantage that does need to be outlined is. Um, when working um, further away, that work becomes much more economically viable. Um, in, in the past, um, I may have gone up to meet a customer and sell the product, and on that initial visit, I would have measured the framework, so I would have taken the, um, uh, the dimensions required for producing the frameworks. But then a second visit would have been needed to the boat for two members of staff. Now, if that boat was a four hour trip away, that's four hours there, four hours back, so it's eight hours. For two members of staff, that now becomes 16 hours. So 16 hours traveling time, plus their time on the boat setting up the frameworks and taking the, um, taking the templates. That time is no longer required. So I would have taken the initial CAD data on my first visit to see the client. Um, we only work further away from our premises if we've actually got the sale. Um, so the customer would need to 
uh, confirm and we would take ask for photos to be sent if we weren't familiar with the boat so we could give a firm price first um, but once there's that commitment um, I, I could go up and visit and take the data we needed so that's a massive financial advantage um, in, in terms of uh, labor saving um, so it increases our coverage area um, so work which would not have been economically viable beforehand um, we can take on board now um, so that, that, that's just an absolute win-win for us and we would still charge traveling cost anyway and the client would expect to pay traveling but um, there's, there's a big save in there and part of that we can obviously pass on so we learnt all of our 2D skills over a number of years by producing um, cutting plans for um, cut and out repeat orders so this is all 2D based but what you learn is with uh, reinforcing pockets um, lots of this is offsets so you, if, if your pockets are four inches wide four and a half inches wide it, all this becomes very very easy in terms of using CAD tools to offset um, the same with seam allowances um, put what we call match marks to line up the panels um, this you'll find that the CAD tools once you learn them become make the whole process much much quicker so you, you're doing this on a screen um, you're nesting the panels which means stacking them down to use the least amount of material but obviously you're, you, you're, you're still making sure the panels run the right way on the cloth in terms of stretch um, but we, we learned all those skills over, over a few years before we even contemplated um, going over to 3D so nobody is going to learn this over a few months and um, if you haven't got the patience for this um, you probably shouldn't even start don't, don't expect to um, be doing this in a, in a, over a very uh, short course of time um, but look a, a, on it as a mountain to climb um, what will happen is you'll start uh, being more and more confident in more and more complicated work so maybe um, initially when you start to move into the 3D CAD it'll be the more basic projects first and as you develop your, your skills um, that, that you'll take on more complicated jobs so if you feel this is for you and you want to grow your business, um, I, I would uh, go up ahead with taking on board Rhino, learn it first, then look to maybe acquire a CNC cutting table. Um, you know, initially you may have somebody else that's um, cutting out for you, but at, at a certain stage you, you're going to have to make that investment. Um, so with the cutting table, and the, um, the CAD package, you are able to design all your 2D products. Um, sign writing uh, becomes really, really easy. Um, you can use any Windows font, uh, graphics, um, again, very, very easily to draw within Rhino. And uh, if you've got a CNC cutting table, um, very easy, easy to produce. Any, um, you know, Lee cloths, uh, halyard bags, winch covers, um, any mass produced stuff. Um, you, you've got your mechanism for, for producing that and the table should be on its way to produce um, paying for itself you know especially if you've got uh, um, repeat orders and if that's the side of a business that um, you want to get into um, importers manufacturers are going to expect trade rates off you they're going to expect you to be producing this work at um, a significant margin less than retail um, this is where you will um, save, save the money um, in terms of paying for that. Uh, you, you're going to cut your labour in terms of um, re replicating orders. And obviously that will pay for the investment in uh, equipment. Once you've got that up and running, I'd possibly, um, oh, at that stage, look into um, being able to acquire the CAD data yourself. You should have um, significant CAD skills by this stage. And we use the ProLiner 8, um, and that's the tool. Um, I'm pretty confident, that even at the moment, um, it's probably the tool that's best suited to our industry if you want to be doing what we're doing. And you know, have a look around our website. There's um, over 8,000 photos on our website, and um, including projects that you know will be 15, uh, 18 years old now. Um, we started photographing in detail once digital cameras came out. Um, and just a tip, if you're looking to 
replicate orders, then you need to be photographing in detail um, in terms of where uh, frame mounting positions um, and all the relevant information you would need to refit that product or for a customer to be able to um, self fit that product at a later date. But if you look at most of the designs over the last, um, I would say six, seven years, and especially the, the projects over the last four or five years, we've tended to upload into the gallery all the CAD shots that uh, would have been sent to the customer in terms of signing that project off. Um, for, for, mainly for the fact that they tend to um, show easier sometimes how the frames work around winches and um, there's not so much going on with other boats in the background so it makes it easier and clearer to see the, the canvas profiles. So we, we need to, like I say, look at um, how we're going to acquire that data. Proliner is what I would recommend. Um, there are some serious shortcomings. The wire is the problem. Um, we, uh, if you talk to anybody, they'll they will tell you that you know um, that it can be a little bit cumbersome to use. But we trialed many many systems, and um, I keep my eye out in, in terms of technology. Um, most of the advancement seems to be in, in terms of uh, degrees of accuracy. We're, we're not in engineering. We do not need you know, hundreds of a millimetre in terms of accuracy. Um, what I wish they would concentrate on is something which is um, more portable, um, applicable to be, you know, being used in a marine environment out, out, out on, you know, in the field. So portable power supply. Um, but... For, for whatever reason, most investment seems to be in terms of accuracy at the moment. Um, the other devices that you may look at are um, devices that uh, um, acquire point cloud data. So laser scanners, um, uh, structured light, um, and th there are other mechanisms for acquiring point cloud data. Um, we have some of those files um, that we've been supplied or that we've um, when we've trialed some of these systems. Now, most, um, well, to, to be honest, we've not seen a laser system or a structured light system that has um, acquired uh, the data satisfactorily in a marine environment. Um, the, the very fact of the, uh, the bright sunlight and the glare of the light off the GRP and, and the water um, seems to confuse the devices and there's a lack of um, geometry in terms of um, I, I, I liken it to um, the, 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 the um, device has taken lots and lots of snapshots and so basically you're looking um, you acquire a jigsaw puzzle and all those jigsaw, jigsaw puzzle pieces if we imagine them are rectangles so A4, um, A, A4 rectangles and what you'll find is that on a lot of those pieces, they will be completely white because the, um, the, the field of view, the, um, the, the, the uh, size of um, the acquired data um, per individual shot probably isn't that far away from an A4 piece of paper. And so the, the software is unable to put the jigsaw puzzle together because there are too many plain white piece, uh, pieces with no geometry. Now, you could put target markers all over the boat, and um, these are coded targets. Now, we've done that and we've looked at that, and um, it takes too long um, in terms of time. And you end up with a file which is so, so large that it's very, very difficult to process that file. Um, <laughs> You, you, you can ask the software to just mirror the, um, mirror the image and you can practically walk away from your PC, come back 45 minutes later to check if it's um, actually processed that one command and you'll probably find it's crashed and you, you need to start again. So the, 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 the file size is so, so large and um, the software, that, that's if you do obtain the data, which seems to be um, relying on these coded targets. Um, the, the other uh, um, advice we were given in terms of laser scanners working in an outdoor environment is that uh, perhaps if it was a car or something similar, um, you would dust down with a special grey non-reflective powder. Um, <laughs> that's just completely untenable for us to do that on a yacht. Um, 
that just wouldn't work. Um, it was also suggested that we work late in the evening uh, in subdued lighting conditions. This is to get over the reflectivity of the, G of the GRP. Um, with a laser, um, the reflectivity, um, the GRP is almost like a mirror. So um, the, the, uh, the software that was acquiring the data kept error, error and sending out an error signal and we kept having to start again and again and again. And we, we've tried many, many um, different systems. So any, anybody out there that's uh, a, an agent for um, uh, a mechanism to acquire CAD data and uh, wants to come and talk to me, then by, by all means, um, uh, um, contact us. But you, you're aware of um, now some of the issues that we found in, in the past. Equally, you can get back to the factory and you can find that you've got um, parts of the data that are missing. Um, we did find a system that worked and it, uh, it worked on infrared, but again, the processing time um, for the, uh, the file is, is absolutely massive. And um, we're not in a project where, um, we're not supplying a product where you, know, you can allow two or three weeks to, um, uh, to, to process the data and reservice the data. So for, for me, um, the idea of a probe and actually registering the, the points where the probe is held um, is probably better than uh, cloud data. What I would really like is a system that did both, whereby you could take a quick scan of the boat and um, that would acquire a, a point data cloud which didn't have to be too accurate. Um, and, and then a probe which would actually register the points um, within that file that you wanted. Um, although the majority of our work, what I would like to be, uh, be discussing here is on uh, new designs where there's not a framework on the boat. You can imagine um, if you were doing a recover to take a, a scan of the boat with a, with a laser, which is like holding a, a, a spray gun and you're just covering the whole area and that data is being acquired. And then having a probe where you could actually register around the framework um, and, and register that curve, um, that, that, that would be beneficial. It's difficult to um, explain why point cloud data is uh, difficult to use. But what I would say is that anybody that's um, contemplating acquiring or paying um, for such a system, um, I, I would verify first that you can use that data. So on, on your screen, you'll spin around that point cloud. Um, if I was to take a human torso, it would look absolutely correct. Um, but in terms of actually um, using that in a CAD package, if you do a little bit of research, you'll find out that data is very, very difficult to, to use and without an awful lot of post-processing. So in terms of using the um, data from a ProLiner, um, if you've ever trialed uh, the ProLiner, you'll know that the wire gets in the way. Um, so uh, and there are lots and lots of points that you just cannot get to because the wire would touch a high point. Um, so we um, would split the scene up into three or four. Sometimes it can even be eight or nine jigsaw pieces, if that makes sense. So that we would look, set the ProLiner up, acquire the data that we could from that one point, and then we would move the ProLiner, acquire the data from that point, move the ProLiner, and those parts would be put together in the CAD. So like a jigsaw puzzle, stitching those pieces together. And what we would do in each, um, each scene, we would um, register probably um, five or six, try to get five or six, uh, what we would call match points. And um, you, you, you can guarantee that once you move the ProLiner, you won't be able to get to two or three of those five points. And you need three points in each scene to snap the, um, the segments together. So that's why we would um, take five or six, so that hopefully we'd always get three corresponding points in each scene. Um, we take an awful lot of photos, and there has to be some guesswork, um, some educated guesswork. So um, take measures, uh, take, take measure on photos in terms of getting to areas and points um, that you can't 
readily um, access. Um, it's easier for the boats out in the water on a cradle because you can sight the proliner off the boat, um, but invariably that's not the case. And the, the tripod creates some issues as well because what the tripod does is um, the legs obviously uh, create a triangle on the base. Um, the tripod, what would happen is you, you could put the tripod as far outboard as you can with the outer legs right on uh, against the tow rail of the boat. But the, the, the pro liner will sit inside of that because it will sit at the peak of the tripod. And that can make it very difficult on a motorboat getting around the sides of the, um, the coach roof where it's got a narrow walkway. So photographs, um, tape measure, and occasionally, um, it is very occasionally, there will be areas that you just cannot get to with a pro liner. Um, so what it might be in, um, in these situations is that you actually make a template. Um, you have most of the data and maybe you leave one edge slightly unfinished and that panel will be cut out of a uh, template material and that part will need to be manually shaped. Um, so we can't wait until a better system comes out. Um, the one thing that stopped us dipping our toes in the water, so to speak, in terms of moving into the 3D CAD was we wanted something better than the ProLiner. Um, we waited, uh, I would say, two and a half years. Um, nothing came along better. And I don't think that there's a better product on the market now um, over the last um, six or seven years following on from that. So um, like I say, not ideal. Um, you'll need to learn um, tricks and uh, fixes to get around various issues. Um, but again, they're not unsurmountable. You should be able to um, pick, pick, those, pick those up as you develop your skills. If there are any manufacturers out there that um, would like to produce a product for our trade, um, there really is a demand for it. Um, we've been contacted by companies all over the world, and um, that, that's no exaggeration. All, all over Europe, Scandinavia, Australia, New Zealand, Canada, and a few in the States. And um, they're begging out for something easier to use in the ProLiner. Um, so whether it's ProLiner themselves or somebody else that's working in this field, I, I have a few ideas. Um, I'm, I'm not um, engineering based, but um, like I say, we don't need the absolute accuracy um, that, that uh, some of the other platforms want. But I'd welcome any company that wanted to perhaps um, work with ourselves and maybe one or two other companies in the States in terms of trying to produce something better suited to our industry. Um, just on a, on a side note, um, the first um, software that we looked at was a photogrammetry package. And we actually um, produced a couple of trial spray hoods in-house and it worked absolutely fine. And um, we worked with the, uh, the, the developer of the, um, the software. It's a product called um, Rhino Photo. And um, as I say, it worked. Uh, apart from when we took it out on site, most boats are on the water. And um, with the side of the coach roof or trying to get on top of um, the higher areas, um, you just cannot, you can't walk on water, so you can't get far enough away from the area you're trying to photograph to get enough of the scene in the photo. Um, and what happened with very wide angle lenses, the accuracy fell down. So if you imagine on the side of a motorboat that's got a, a, a coach house, um, if you're standing on that coach house, um, you cannot uh, ha place the camera far enough back to get all the required shots. And the same is true in terms of um, being able to get the camera high enough in certain scenarios. Um, so yeah, photogrammetry um, does actually work and gave quite good results. It was just the fact that um, uh, you need access all the way around the boat. One thing I should mention in terms of um, benefits for 3D CAD design is um, th this has really set us apart from our competition here in the UK. As far as I'm aware, nobody else is able to offer the design service that, that we do. And we've become internationally recognized. Um, we have been contacted by you know, clients all around the world. Um, unfortunately, we're not able to service all those jobs, but um, 
there's become a real awareness of what we're doing. And the clientele over here, uh, the, they, they are aware now of the CAD process and seem to expect um, to be able to see the designs, to be able to be involved in the designs, to see proper representations of the product before it's produced. Now that's how we operate and we do this on all of our work. But our, our, <coughs> the competition, they're not able to offer this as far as I'm aware. Um, that they will always catch up, um, that's the nature of the industry. But as far as I'm aware, we are still um, unique in this country in terms of the design process. And so particularly with demanding clients, um, and these tend to be the ones that are prepared to spend a little bit more on the project to make sure they get absolutely what they want. Um, they have no other option. Uh, you know, we are the only company offering this service as far as I am aware. So that really is one major reason for um, implementing the CAD design process as well. It will set you apart from the competition. Um, we've always had a good name. We've always worked on um, uh, many new boat uh, projects and pros prestigious work. Um, we've been in existence now for 30, 30 plus years, um, but we are unique now in terms of our CAD design process. Additionally, we do not um, need to compete directly on price anymore in terms of the retail market. Um, what we're doing now is, is different. So the customers will pay a premium in terms of the um, design work, the design element. Um, so we're not looking to compete directly against our competitors on a pricing basis. Um, our clients pay a premium in terms of um, the work that we supply. Part of that will be down to materials as well and you know the specification of the product. But equally, part of that will be down for our, um, for, for, for our design skills. Um, lastly, one thing that really would make all of this much, much easier is if the boat manufacturers out there would release the 3D CAD files. Most modern boats are being produced now in, um, in CAD and Rhino will actually import most file formats. So it doesn't even have to be a Rhino file. Now, the, the few boat manufacturers that we've worked with that um, have been able to supply us the files, this has made life so much easier. Um, but we've made inquiries in the past about some of the imported brands that we work on in terms of um, having the files um, available. Um, I'm, I'm sure there's a way of, you know, um, protecting copyright or, um, you know, uh, making sure that certain information um, wasn't released and only the relevant parts were released for the canvas work. But that would make life easier for every one of us out there. Um, I don't think this is going to happen, but um, it's a request. Um, if they want to see better canvas products on their boats, um, they, they could go a long way to helping the canvas manufacturers out there in terms of releasing these files. Well, I've really enjoyed this. Um, I really wish I could have been out there with you, um, but um, for, for reasons um, outside of my control, um, I've not been able to, um, to, 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 to um, visit this year. Um, I do hope to come over at some point in the future um, to visit a few of the shops out there and um, I've got to know um, various people out in the States now through um, uh, one of the forums that um, I tend to spend a lot of, a lot of time on cover and cushion. Um, Mark Hood, who you all know well, is involved in that forum as well. Um, I think the more that we pull together in this trade and have a concerted voice, um, the more likely we are um, to have... Uh, available what we need so whether that's um it, it could be one thing that i'm always banging on about is um colored zips being available you know beige zip for beige beige uh, fabric but in terms of software requirements maybe having custom tools written for rhino that would um would, would work uh um for all of us um it would be great to have a concerted voice and maybe the forum and, and the MFA uh, together is, is, is one way to do this. 
Um, well, most of us are small, uh, small companies um, and don't have the clout. But together, um, I must admit, since I've joined uh, the Cover and Cushion Forum, the amount of companies and small companies out there in, uh, in the States that are actively involved in our trade, um, it's astonishing. Um, so um, let's work together in terms of trying to get the product advancement that we all um, would wish for in our trade. Um, well, I, I guess I should finish off by saying Happy New Year to you all. Um, have a look around our website, as I mentioned before. And um, we're hoping to organize some sort of a question and answer session, but I'm not sure if that's going to be possible. Um, but yeah, hope, hopefully um, we, we can do that.